So we got no life Shaq giving his side of the beef uh between the Knox Hill versus Screwface and yeah, cause he got brought up a few times during the beef. So we're gonna hear about his side of things and see, you know, what information he's trying to give us and whatnot. So yeah. Let's check it out. I hope you guys enjoy. As always, please leave a like, comment, subscribe, and yeah, let's get it. What's good, no life gang? It's your boy. It's the dog Shaq, man. Hey, as y'all saw the title, this is me uh, expressing my opinions on the beef. All right, I'm going to get straight to it. I ain't here to waste y'all time. I All right, boom. I'm going to start off with uh, about the Knox and Screw Beef, y'all. It was getting out of hand. That's why I stopped reacting to the tracks. I told y'all that in my last reaction. I was no longer reacting to no more of the beef because it was getting it was getting crazy, bro. Damn. Families was getting involved. <laughs> Fan bases was going at each other. It was being segregated from blacks and whites. I did not oh, like no. that. Yeah. So that's well, why I got out of it. Thank God I stopped at like the second one. Yeah, I'm like, you know what? I'm not gonna spread this negativity, bro. I'm off the wave. I'll watch it on my free time, but yeah, I'm not gonna react to it anymore, bro. But yeah. A uh, whole reason I even reacted to the beef because I got mentioned in two rounds. So that's why I even react to it in the first place. But I gotta put this out here. I gotta make this video. I told Screw I would make this video. I as y'all know, Screw dropped another track early in the morning yesterday. So I woke up to it, and I woke up to people spamming me like, bro, screw this, you. He said Again. you was lying about the No Jumper interview and the, the uh, label sponsorships. So I said, all right, boom. I'm not reacting to the track. So. See, and this is why, bro. It's just like you can't even wake up and look at your phone and see some positivity. It's always someone diss you, this and that. Like, no one wants to see that at crack of dawn. You get crusty your eyes, and that's the first thing you're seeing, bro. Ain't nobody want that type of vibe and energy, bro. Like, nah. What I'm going to do, I'm going to go to his comment section, and I'm going to uh, leave a comment to let him know. Check your DM, bro. I send you all the receipts to your DM. That's what I did. I went on the ops territory mm -hmm. and, dropped and told him that. But yeah, I went on the ops territory and I left that comment and I told Screw, check your DMs, bro. Like, I'm not finna do this back and forth with you. Just check your DMs. Straight to the so point. Boom. Yeah, I like that type of energy. I sent him the receipts and then I even put one of the receipts on my story, tied a minute to make sure he see it. So, basically, in his last track, he said I was lying about all that, that I said I got him the No Jumper interview and the, the label sponsorships. Sent him the receipts over. He saw it, and he was like, dang, he, he really did DM me. He really did try to contact me for this, this label stuff. Come to find out, Damn. since Screw never responded, that particular label never got the reach out to him because he never saw it he oh, never saw it until yesterday damn so boom that's that with that so that label never got damn see Shaq is a w man's bro screw didn't even know that's why you gotta be humble and chill bro like he can't be a crash out dummy because you're just gonna burn bridges and ruin opportunities and you feel me you just gotta be chill bro to reach out to screw the no jumper interview was one big uh one big misunderstanding. So I was contacted by No Jumper. Uh, I guess it was like some, I don't know if it was some older workers or what, but I got contacted by a No Jumper email uh, early November. Uh, they asked me about interviewing. Uh, I declined, but I, I gave other recommendations of other reactors in the community, with Screw being one of them. W um, man's and then <laughs> W man's hey hey and I'm small but shit I'm done for any interview bro just hit me up in the DMs and I'm good bro <laughs> it's all while me and school don't like well school don't like me that's all while like me why though not seeing out of eye uh cause I still I still chip for niggas bro like I don't I'm not a hater never been a hater and don't want to come off as a hater so school was one of the ones I recommended uh off the top of my head, Dante, uh, Crip. Dante. Uh, yeah, so I don't know if they ever got reached out to. So 
what happened was the real no jumper had DM me and Screw on the same day with the same message. I don't know about the times, but the same message. The the message y'all saw in his in his diss track. So I didn't see Screw it. responded. I never did. So Screw reached out to that same contact and was like, "Hey, can y'all let me know if I got that interview because of No Life Shack?" She said, "I never talked to No Life Shack. I reached out to him." I really wanted to have him on the interview, but he never responded. So in Screw Mind, he looking at, oh, this nigga Shaq lying. Yeah, so I, I was thinking right, hold up, Screw, hold too. up. Yeah. We was going back and forth in the DMs. I was like, bro, I have no reason to lie about an interview. So I contacted the same lady that he was talking to, and I and I let her know. I told her what my email was, what I talked to the people from No Jumper about. She was like, yeah, that probably was a fake uh, no jumper. It'd be a lot of imitators trying to act like us. The email looked legit. It wasn't a Gmail. It was a, like a legit email. So whoever Damn. I talked to and gave the recommendations to, I obviously want the, the real no jumper. So then I knew nothing about that. The real no jumper even DM me on IG because I really don't check my messages. And I, when I finally contacted her, she was happy as shit that she was talking to me. So that was a whole big misunderstanding. I'm thinking my recommendations got screwed the interview because all the timing was around the same time. But I told school I put it out there the same way I put it out there that I got him the interview. I get right back on here and let y'all know I did not get screwed that interview. So now that I did that, the conversation me and school had with had together on the phone. Um, it went very well, man. Like just for Shaq to do that alone is mad respect, bro. Just for him to come on here and be like, "Hey, listen, I messed up. My bad. You did that on your own. It wasn't on me." Yeah, yeah. Big props. It wasn't bro. no yelling. It wasn't no screaming at each other. It was two men talking, hashing it out. Uh, after we got past the no jumper part and the label part. Uh, I asked school straight up. I said, bro, what's your, what's your problem with me, bro? Like, what's been going on? Why y'all running around with this coon narrative? And I let him know. I said, bro, where I'm from, the South, South Carolina, we don't play that coon shit, bro. We don't play that. I said, bro, you could call me anything in the world, mm -hmm. but you're not finna call me a coon. I said, I don't play that. I said, oh, I see y'all running around. Y'all calling Stevie that too. I said, bro, we don't play that over here. Like, yeah. that whole cool <laughs> shit. Because I said, bro, if south, you knew me yeah. for real, you would know I'm nowhere near cool. So, basically, I let him know that, and he let me know his problem came with me at, with the whole up church beef. And he said it really didn't start there. He said that's what kind of got his mind going. He said he felt like I took up church side when they was beefing because up church had the bigger fan base and I had some of the same fans as Up Church. So he ought to Bro, you can't get mad of another man's opinion, bro. That's that's what it's about because he think that he What type of fem Alright, bro. I hope if bro if this is true, bro, screw face. Nah, bro. You can't be moving like that's female tendencies, bro. I automatically on. thought I went against him to please that fan base, which is not the case. And I let him know that. I said, bro. Bro, even though who cares? Let the man get his bag. Bro, okay, so what? Like, I need you to listen to this carefully. I don't give a damn about no size or no fan base. I don't give a damn what type of people watch me. I don't care what color these niggas are. I stand on my own opinion. I don't give a damn if all 4 million, 4.5 million of y'all are saying one thing. If I don't stand on that myself, I'm not going to run with that. I don't let nobody Facts. sway my opinion, none of that. I said, I don't let my mama sway my opinion, my fan base uh, sway my opinion, nobody. I stand on my own opinion. I said, so, bro, that wasn't the case. So he said, it started with that. He said, and then the whole Adam Calhoun clip of uh, you trashing black people came out. He said, all right, then, now I got a problem with this nigga because to him, it's looking like, all right, this nigga, a coon. He's taking the white side over the black side. 
that's what happened when you don't when you have a small mind and you just listen to things from one point of view and you don't have like an open mind to be like look from a different perspective and be like oh well maybe this person mean it in this way and that way like have to have an open mind bro and that's what the problem with this whole beef was it started to be black versus white yeah it's like, come i on. said so bro i said you didn't see the explanation that i put out five years ago about that he said, no. He said, what was it? I said, I said it on my video yesterday, too. I said, maybe you need to go watch it, or I'll tell you right now. I said, bro, I was talking about my environment that I see every day. I said, bro, I have no white people around me in real life. None. I had a white best friend in middle school and, and had a few white friends in high school, but majority of my surroundings, especially now, I graduated high school uh, 13 years ago. So for the past 13 years, I have no white people around me. I said, bro, I was speaking on what I see every day. And he said, oh, now it makes sense. Yeah. The stuff you was putting out there, now it makes sense. He said, I thought you were talking about black people as a whole. I said, no, bro. I was talking about the black people that I see on a daily basis, that I'm with, that I'm seeing in my hometown every day that's what i was speaking of so he completely understood that and, Real man. and that was it but yeah that started a whole nother conversation he was like bro i just feel like it was me versus knox me versus knox your fan base and knox fan base and other reactors fan base he said it just felt like it was him versus the rest of the reactors <laughs> it's I, just all right, so he he felt like it was him as Drake and like versus everyone else. All right, I feel. <laughs> I said, bro, you um, feel like Drake at the moment. It's like that because like you them had beef with almost everybody, bro. So almost everybody that's reacting to the beef, they gonna automatically jump on knock side because you them had a problem with these people. So it might seem like that, but we trying to be fair as possible. But some people are gonna automatically jump on Knox's side because of the reputation you got out there. He said, bro, but I do like white people. He said, you said I don't like white people. I said, yeah, I did say that. I said, bro, because that's how you putting it out there. That's how it's looking, bro. I said, the fans are saying you just use Eminem for views because you just stop reacting to Eminem, period. He said, no. He said he slowed down on the M stuff because he said he don't like the stands. He said the stands of these fan bases, he said they are just one-sided, they're just biased. And he said that's how the whole beef felt. He felt like the community was being biased mm. and being on Knox's side steady his. When that won't the case with me at all. I said, bro, I was going at you because you was going at me. <laughs> I said, so if it seemed like that with me, it's because I was going against you to defend myself. Yeah. It's so like I said, bro, that's why it's he can't throw a rock and I expect you can't throw a punch and expect someone not to throw a punch back, bro. You can't just expect someone to stick it on the chin and be like, okay, we cool now. Like, no, that's not gonna happen, bro. Whatsoever. Seem like and he said, Bro, I don't think you understand how big your fan base is and that you can literally like switch a whole beef around and make it look like one person is losing and one person is winning depending on what side you take i said bro i said a lot of times i i don't get here and look at my subscriber count i get on here and drop my video and i i get off the internet i don't look at my comments i read the first couple but that's about it i said i don't read my comments i don't track the color of people that follow me hmm. i said yeah, but i really thought about <laughs> it on the phone I said, bro, you got to think about how I came up. On YouTube, I came up with one Eminem reaction. I went from 70,000 to 400K overnight. So that's a whole bunch of Eminem fans. Overnight? 70K to 400,000 over... Wow. Fans following me in one night. I kept the Eminem reactions going. So I'm gaining more Eminem supporters which is mostly white, right? That's what Screw was getting to. He was like, bro, they're mostly white and they're, they're biased with Eminem. 
So I said, yeah. I said, every fan base has biased supporters. So he said, uh, he said, yeah. And then with the whole up church, you got all his fans going against me too when you took up church side. I said, mm. first of all, I didn't take up church side. I said up church won the beef, but I never told no side. He said, so now it's Eminem fans, it's up church fans, and y'all know. He said, he said he used to be a Tom McDonald fan before Tom McDonald started moving a certain way. And you know, I still rock with Tom. I, I support Tom. Uh, I don't agree with everything Tom say, but I have a lot of Tom fans that watch me too. So he yeah. said, bro, you got all these fans from these same uh, type of fan bases coming against me. So I was like, bro, I said, I don't, <laughs> I can't control these people. He said, yes, you can with what side you choose. I said, bro, I choose my side because of me, not... So Screwface basically asking him to just be biased just because of what, color of the skin or something? Like, come on, bro. Because of who I think my fans want me to choose. I said, if they feel like that about you, I'm pretty sure that's just their own opinion. Mm -hmm. I said, going forward, I will no longer react to the beefs because every beef that go on through YouTube and Shaq get to reacting... They say it get one-sided after I state my opinion. So no life game, we gotta chill out. Uh, we gotta stop spamming screw with screw Zeno because he talked about that too. He said, bro, they spamming me everywhere. He said, I really ain't been yeah, getting Yeah, that no online sleep. bullying thing uh, needs to stop, Trying to defend bro. my name. That's so I cool. said, bro, that's my fault. I told him to do that. So uh, I get right on here and tell him to stop. I said, but some of them still gonna spam you just to let you know. Some of them gonna spam you for the rest of your life. So I said, for the most part, they'll chill out, but I can't control five million niggas, bro. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's all it was, bro. I, I just let Screw know, like, I won't with all the cool talk because if you know me in real life, which y'all don't, you know I'm nowhere near that type of person. <laughs> I'm probably the blackest black nigga <laughs> you don't ever come across if y'all knew me for real. Uh, I said, I just blew up with a white fan base. I can't help that. I got just as much black fans as white fans. I promise you. I can show you my analytics. Uh, but yeah, that's all it was, man. Screw just felt like it was him versus the community. When, when in reality, it won't. It was just Screw just had so many beefs with yeah. everybody in the community. Did a certain narrative is now put out there about Screw. So that's going to be used against you in a beef. Knox is a very likable person. And for the community, everybody looking at you as a certain way. So they going to automatically take Knox's side. So he said he just felt like his disses was coming with facts, proof, and Knox won't respond to none of that. He was just coming on his track, just telling more and more lies. I said, yeah. bro, I, I clearly said that in one of my reactions. I don't, he said, I didn't watch it, so I didn't know. So I said, bro, go watch my reaction. I said those exact words in my reaction. I said, if Knox can't prove that this is a lie in his next one, then it's tied. The score is tied. I said, bro, do you think you lost round one? He said, he said he felt like he won. I said, bro. You really came at Knox on your round one. He said, what was my round one? I said, the whole, I can't remember the name. Was it Euphoria? The Euphoria one? He said, I said, bro, you barely came at Knox in the whole track. He said, bro, that wasn't really a diss track towards Knox. He said, so technically my second track was my first response. So I said, bro, we, us as watchers, we're thinking, that first one that you put out was... Because you name it a diss... Euphoria is known as a diss song, Screwface. So if you name a song after known for a popular diss song, the same thing, people are going to be like, okay, two to, you know, plus plus one, two. I mean, come on, bro. Like Towards well, Knox. He said, yeah. no, that wasn't a diss. It started with me and Knox just throwing shot, shots at each other on a verse back and forth. I said, so... When the reactors came in, we not we don't know that. So we thinking exactly. that first one you put out was a Knox disc, and Knox first one was a That's what I was thinking. Disc. Couldn't find out the, the, the count was wrong the whole time. 
So yeah, that's all the conversation was, bro. Like school just felt like it wasn't being judged fair because of us us big reactors that that was leaning towards Knox side that he thought was leaning towards Knox side was against him. So he just felt like he didn't have a fair chance. And he said Knox was just steady lying on his name with the diss tracks coming with no receipts, no nothing. So I, I said, bro, I can see how you would be frustrated with that. If you put out all your receipts and people still saying right. you lost, I said, I get it. I said, but I still feel like Knox won the, the battle. Like it was 2-1, if anything. So he said, people said I got 3-0. I said, bro, even if Knox didn't win that last one, it, it was still 2-1 in my opinion. So I let him know where I stood. I yeah. can't speak for everybody else. But yeah, the conversation went like that with school, me and school not enemies. We're not friends either, but we're not enemies. I told him, bro, if you ever need something, reach out. Um, same with Knox. Knox, you still my dog. I still support you. I'm still gonna react to your music. Uh, but let's just end the beef, man. Like everything was much funner when everybody was together, man. Right. Let's get back to that as a community. Right. That's what I always try to do anyway, is keep the community together. We don't need to be going against each other. We need to work together. And that's what it is. So yeah, that's what we talked about. Uh, if y'all watch the whole video, don't spam screw with screw Zeno no more. That's over with, man. No like gang, I love y'all. Thank y'all for all the support. All right, that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoy. Let me know in the comments what you think, your opinion and whatnot. Also like, subscribe, join the fam. I'm trying to get big as him one day, bro. I'm trying to, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to create a little nice positive environment you feel me but as always you know i'm gonna see you guys for the next one all right appreciate y'all